Hi, today I am going to be covering another Ask Abigail. Uh, um, this question today is all about dehydrated skin. How do I sort it? So, there are so many things about dehydrated skin. Firstly, is it actually dehydrated? It could be dry. And they're kind of, the similarities, but the, there's differences between the two. Dehydration, if you imagine drinking water, if you don't drink enough water, you get dehydrated. That's the same with the skin. Dehydration is often a lack of moisture, whereas dry skin is a little bit more a hereditary kind of type of skin, uh, and it can be a little bit more of a lack of oil, maybe finer pores as well. Um, but all skin types can be dehydrated at some point. So uh, when I was asked about how do I treat my dehydrated skin? I'm gonna kind of cover both options as a little bit of a, of a together, because uh, I'm never fully sure exactly what someone's experiencing. So, firstly, I think the key thing that you automatically grab for is uh, a thicker cream. You know, it might be that you're feeling your skin's a bit tight, a bit itchy, a bit uncomfortable, maybe a little bit flaky. And grabbing for that richer cream, you feel like you need that comfort blanket on the skin isn't necessarily gonna be doing you any favors. So I'm gonna kind of go through a few tips that I think are, are much better placed and will actually give you some results rather than grabbing for the thick moisturizer and, and you still kind of go and help, it's not working. So firstly, you still need to be cleansing in the morning, whether it's a cream cleanser or an oil, uh, or even a gentle wash. And I know on a dry or dehydrated skin, that might sound a little bit, oh, I don't want that, that kind of wash texture on the skin. But if you're an oily dehydrated, you still need to be cleansing with some kind of wash. We don't want to throw it all too much the other way and you suddenly start breaking out. So we still need to do that part of your routine. You could add in a hydrating tonic. Not all skins need them, and I'm not gonna be mentioning specific brands, so I'd want to give you the kind of knowledge for key ingredients and type of product to, to help you self-select. Uh, a hydrating tonic that's gonna add almost like a, a, a level of moisture water hydration to the skin. Uh, it might be something with hyaluronic acid or aloe vera or something like that. Then I'd be looking at potentially a hyaluronic acid serum. If you haven't heard about hyaluronic acid, it's in a load of skincare products. It has the ability to hold a thousand times its weight in moisture. So if you imagine a molecule of hyaluronic is this size, a thousand times that is quite huge. So a hyaluronic uh, serum kind of have that, you, to be honest, they don't give you that wow feeling when you first put them on. Some of them can feel a little bit tacky. And that's actually where applying a hydrating tonic first gives the hyaluronic something to grab hold of and kind of help plump out and absorb into the skin. So the hyaluronic and the hydrating tonic is gonna help with that moisture, that, that fluid uh, content within the skin. Then your moisturizers, absolutely, 100%. I would be sticking away from things that are overly fragranced. Um, they might kind of irritate, especially if you know your barrier function isn't kind of fully intact. Um, I'm gonna come back to barrier function in a moment. But yeah, something that's nourishing and suitable for your skin. So if you're an oily dehydrated, don't grab the heavy. It needs to be a light texture as well. Then obviously your, your SPF. In the evenings, or maybe uh, once a week, twice a week, dependent on what your skin can take, I know this might sound controversial with a dry dehydrated skin, but I'd be adding in something like a lactic acid toner or exfoliating kind of product. A lactic molecule will exfoliate, but it also has the ability to, to boost your own moisture levels within the skin. So it's gonna brighten, get rid of some of maybe the dry, dead skin cells, boost your moisture inside, so then your hydrating serums that you're gonna put on top are gonna to be able to work more efficiently as well. So those are probably a few key things with your home care, instead of grabbing for the rich product, uh, that you might find helpful. In the evening, this is gonna sound very controversial because a lot of skincare ranges that we've all been brought up with, they all have heavy night creams. I don't like heavy night creams. I don't think they're needed. 
I haven't personally used that on, on my skin or advised any of my clients to use a heavy night cream for years and years. I just find if you cleanse, hydrate, serum, maybe a little bit of oil if your skin needs it, or a hydrating serum, that's all that the skin needs. I find overloading the skin at night time with heavy products, you might kind of break out with a few little spots. It might just kind of, I don't know, I've, I've never seen it do what I really would want them to do. And I've just found personally and with my clients that we get some great results moving away from the old school heavy night creams. So I'd be cleanse, serum, like I said, maybe some kind of oil that kind of works nicely with the, the serum as well for your dehydrated skin. You might once a week want to do a mask or not. That's totally up to you. The other thing is the internal side of it. I'd be avoiding your sugary drinks, your, your caffeines and all of those kind of things. They're not going to be doing you any favours anyway. But if you're really kind of experiencing and suffering from a dry skin, I'd be upping your oil content and fluid content within your diet. So your caffeines and things like that, and that's including black tea, is, is a diuretic. So you might be thinking, you know, I'm only having one coffee or I'm only having two cups of black tea. Uh, actually, they're, they're kind of, you know, almost sapping your, uh, your body from, from water. Your herbal teas are great, you know, obviously water, that kind of thing, to help hold fluid inside the body. Supplements, you can take hyaluronic as a supplement. Uh, it's actually one of the skincare ingredients that I do quite like as a, as a, a take supplement. And things like flaxseed, omega oils, the fish oils, um, upping your, your nuts and your seeds. So it's kind of giving the skin cells, the, the, the building blocks and the nourishment and the hydration that, that they need from the inside. Another interesting supplement and skin ingredient are ceramides. So ceramides, unlike an oil, if you imagine you've got skin cells and they're all built up like a, like a wall, they're kind of like the bricks in the wall, ceramides can hydrate the spaces, the glue in between the cells. So A, it's gonna make the skin more comfortable, B, it's gonna kind of plump out and hydrate, but it all just kind of keeps stuff together better. Uh, so that's another ingredient you might be kind of interested in having a look at as well. Okay, so uh, barrier function when it comes to dry dehydrated skin is essential. Our barrier function, it's kind of part of our defense system with the skin. Um, we need to be giving it the right cleansing, not over stripping, the right hydration to help kind of keep our, our, our skin cells nicely comfortable and building up the, those blocks. A way of kind of supporting that might actually be introducing some topical probiotics. The surface of our skin is, it's, it's not kind of like a dead surface. We, uh, you know, kind of new technology, they've found that um, the, there's healthy bacteria. There can be bad bacteria, obviously, uh, but it's kind of like a, like a nice balance of healthy bacteria. And this isn't just now actually the skin on our face, this is our whole body as well. So topical probiotics and prebiotics for supporting that can really support the barrier function. And sometimes if you're suffering from a dry or dehydrated skin, just switching from your harsh cleansers, your highly synthetic fragrance products to something a little bit more skin barrier function supporting can be all that you need to kind of make that switch with your skin. And then over a, a, a skin cycle, which is roughly four to six weeks, you will feel that, that comfortableness come back to the skin. I hope you found that helpful. Please do ask me any questions below.